What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. We've talked about fan-made champions, we've looked at some awesome fan-made skins, and even some fan-made maps. But it turns out that the community, of course, has even more to offer, and today, We'll be looking at some fan-made reworks, more specifically visual updates, which is really awesome to see because it gives us a fresh perspective on how actual League of Legends players feel like their favorite champions could or should look. We'll be focusing mostly on the art rather than the abilities, of course, but there's a ton of awesome content to go through and it's going to be fun to mix things up a bit. So as always, be sure to check out the original artist. The links are all gonna be in the description. So check them out, show them some love, leave a nice comment on their art. It's definitely something that they appreciate. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it or let us know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. Our first fan-made rework of the day is this insane Malphite design by 3D character and concept artist, Tariq Diaz. I don't know if Riot views Malphite as having wasted potential, but personally, Tariq's vision for him is exactly how I feel like Malphite should look. Malphite is basically a living mountain, and this spin on his design definitely makes that clear. He looks super imposing and actually really realistic for such a low polygon model. It's also worth mentioning that right now there's not really all that much lore behind Malphite, so he's due for some improvements in characterization and an explanation behind his existence, and that's usually kind of the job that takes place in a visual update, and no visual update is complete without an awesome new model and texture, so Riot definitely has a good excuse to make this happen. To recreated this Malphite model for the Riot Games Polycount contest by first sculpting him with ZBrush, then created the UV maps in Blender to add the texture before finishing it up in Photoshop. The attention to detail is really impressive and clearly Tariq has an impressive level of skill, but as a professional artist, I guess that's what you'd expect. Awesome work and I really hope Riot takes some inspiration from this design. The next rework concept is for Mordekaiser by 3D artist Dylan Hall, and you can tell he put a lot of thought into this design. Mordekaiser's backstory is that of an ancient warlord, resurrected by necromancy, so he's essentially just a big evil undead dude in some seriously intense armor. Dylan's idea was to draw inspiration from the Marauder skin line by assuming that the equipment worn by those champions was a Noxian creation that was based on Mordekaiser's armor. Using the Marauders as a foundation, he worked backwards to try to find some sort of middle ground between Mordekaiser's original medieval armor and what a more modern version of that might look like. The end result is a pretty bulky but instantly recognizable figure. Dylan's take on Mordekaiser is built like an absolute tank, and he definitely doesn't look like he needs any help in his lane, so hopefully when he does eventually receive a rework, he'll be back to dominating the solo lanes. Now our next fan-made rework is actually something that's a little bit different. Concept artist Peter Burrows also joined the Riot Games 2017 Polycount contest, but instead of creating new visuals for a champion, instead he decided to improve the environment of Summoner's Rift by creating a new Baron Pit. His design drew influence from the Dark Seal Ring item, and he came up with his own narrative that explained what this area of the map is and how the Baron came to be located there. The story goes that a shrine was built here and five summoners had forced the seemingly unkillable Baron Nasher into the temple following a difficult battle, where they were able to seal him away. After years of neglect, the temple has started to fall apart, and now the Dark Seal is broken, leading the Baron to break free and reappear on Summoner's Rift. It's a pretty cool narrative that keeps things relatively simple using existing League of Legends lore and actually plays nicely into Riot's new focus of building more lore elements directly into the game. And although it's not a champion, it's a really interesting approach to the take of reworking something in the game, and I personally was a really big fan of this one. Peter also went through a ton of effort into making his new Baron Pit look like it could have been created by Riot themselves. And really, it's honestly probably just my favorite concept of today's video, just because of how unique this sort of thing actually is. I mean, who thinks of doing something like this? This piece is just awesome. Now moving back to, of course, champion visual updates, our next rework is for a Mumu and was designed by Andres Castaneda. Andres had a pretty logic approach to this one. Riot has been pushing Yordles into more of a cute and fluffy style for a while now, so it made sense to try something a little bit more colorful for a Mumu. Andres drew a lot of inspiration from other more recent Yordle designs, but he also made a big effort to incorporate more of Shirima into his design. 
As a result, it's actually really easy to tell that this little guy here is a Moomoo, even though it's a pretty massive change from his current form. He still has those trademark bandages like any mummy should, but the rework also includes some gold ornaments that link up nicely with Amumu's Shariman origin. On just really managed to nail Amumu's expression too, he still looks like the sad mummy even with all those extra yordle traits. Honestly, the first time I saw this concept, I legit thought it was an official riot concept art piece, so it's super high quality, looks exactly like the kind of update they'd give Amumu if they wanted to bring him more in line with the other yordles in the game. Our next piece is done by Aris18, with his own take on a Tarek visual update. This one's really interesting because obviously Tarek has already had an official update, so we've got the added benefit of being able to compare and contrast it against the official Riot version. One thing that jumps out straight away is how much closer to the original design Aris's version of Tarek is. The color profile and focus on being the Gem Knight is really similar to Tarek's pre-rework design, and that will definitely appeal more to the older players, the old Tarek mains before the rework. Riot decided to head in a slightly different direction with their visual update for Tarek, and they ended up turning him into more of this fabulous modern day He-Man type of figure. Which one you prefer probably depends on maybe when you started playing the game or really just your personal preference, but honestly based on appearance alone, I think I actually prefer this concept to Riot's own. Obviously, the Tarek visual update came with an updated background and more characterization and all this interesting stuff for Tarek that ended up matching the visual update quite well, but this one is definitely a really cool reimagining of the original Tarek, and you gotta give credit where credit is due. Now there aren't too many champions left in the game that deserve a visual update more than Cho'Gath, and next up we've got Ibrawlwy with his own take on an update for Cho'Gath's visuals. You can immediately see a huge difference in quality between Ibrawlwy's concept and the current Cho'Gath, particularly when it comes to the base skin. Although Riot have done a good job of keeping Cho feeling pretty modern through his skins, his original texture definitely leaves a lot to be desired, and for sure is one of the more outdated concepts that's still left in the game. Ibrawlwy went with a pretty monstrous design, which obviously makes sense for a Voidborn creature with endless hunger, but I can't help but think he looks almost like a fat zergling from the StarCraft franchise. I really like the inclusion of spikes on his body, Ibrawlwy mentioned in the concept description that he took issue with the fact that Cho'Gath has two abilities that use spikes, but his base skin doesn't actually have any spikes in the model. Well, he's not wrong, and Cho'Gath definitely looks a lot more fierce and crazy with some spikes added. And overall, it's a very interesting design, and I like this one a lot too. I guess I like them all, really. I wouldn't be featuring them if I didn't like them. So, that said though, our next one is an awesome looking Kenan update by Daniel Oyales. You know, I always struggle with pronouncing the names, so if I pronounce, mispronounce anyone's name in this video, I'm very sorry, and hopefully you can forgive me. Anyway, something we've noticed so far about community visual update concepts is that they tend to be a lot more true to the original designs of the characters than Riot's own visual updates. Danielle decided to keep the changes pretty minimal, but it actually works really well as a simple visual update to make Kennen look more like a modern champion rather than the somewhat outdated art that he currently has in the game. Adding longer ears definitely helps to give him a more recognizable silhouette so that he stands out against other Yordle champions, and the redesign of his robes is a lot more visually interesting without making any unnecessary changes. It's easy to get roped in by crazy new designs when it comes to visual updates, but there's a real skill in making subtle improvements that build on the original, which definitely makes me appreciate this one quite a lot. Next up on our list of fan-made reworks today is a set of Ash skin reworks by Natalia Trevkov. Next up on our list of fan-made reworks today is a set of Ash skin reworks by Natalia Trykowska. We're so used to seeing the flashy or badass Ash skins, you know, like Project Ash, Marauder Ash, we kind of forget sometimes what it's like to look at the older Ash skins. Something we really like about these ones is that they're just so much more realistic than what Riot usually produces, at least in terms of world building. All of these skins look like you could have just picked Ash up from her homeland and dropped her into the game. You've got to remember that Ash is supposed to be from the Freljord, a region of Runeterra that is dominated by freezing temperatures. If you were living in those conditions, you'd be wrapped up warm and wearing quite a lot of fur clothing and animal hide armor, and that's exactly what Natalia used for her skin designs. This is kind of what we mean by realistic, something that's like true to the environment, and it's really cool to see, especially since Riot have talked a lot about putting more lore elements into the game, and this is a great way to do that kind of thing. 
and it's a design that, well, like all the others, is just awesome. Anyway, that's all the concepts we've got for you guys today. If you want to see some more community creations, definitely make sure you check out some of our older videos and definitely be sure to check out the artists as well. We'll link them all in the description, all the original pieces and information. So check it out, show them some love, leave them a nice comment on their art piece and all that good stuff. Either way, it looks like that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.